Hi uh, guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today is probably going to be another short video and what we're going to cover is radial progress bars. Now I have already covered some sort of progress bars on my channel before, just not radial ones and I've noticed that quite a few people have been asking how do you go about doing this. So let's take a look at the assets that I've created. If we pop over into Photoshop you can see I have a canvas that's 500 pixels by 500. I've created one circle, which is a semi-transparent black circle. So that's going to be a shadow, a background layer. I've also created a smaller white one, which is going to act as a foreground. And I've created another slightly bigger white one, which is going to be our actual fill bar. You put all these together and they don't look like anything special. If I just change that colour though, you'll see more of what I'm going for. So the idea being this white bar will fill up from zero to whatever your maximum value is as a full representation of its value. Now I've gone ahead and I've saved each of these three layers as their own object and I've inserted them into Unity. So we can go ahead and we can just start building what will be a radial bar. So we'll add a canvas and then inside that I'm going to add an empty game object. I'm going to set that to 500 by 500 because I know that's the maximum value of my radial bar. And I'll add that as a name as well. Next we're going to add in an image as a child of our radial bar. Now the first thing I want to do, I want to set the anchor to be full scale of its parent so we can actually scale this up and down and everything will stay in line so I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to select this bottom right one and that's going to anchor it to the center and it's also going to stretch the image out to match its parent size and this is going to be a background so we'll add in a background really simple stuff hope you're keeping up Right, and we'll just name these so we know exactly what's going on. And I'm going to call that shadow. Now I'm going to duplicate that two more times. One for the foreground and one for the fill value. And we'll just drag in a FG, a foreground, and then a fill into the fill value. Simple. And the reason I've kept these white is I like to, especially for UI anyway, keep my sprites as white so I can actually give them the colour inside of Unity. So a uh, foreground will give that a nice blue colour. And we'll just have to reorganise that a little bit. So if you didn't know, in the hierarchy with UI elements, the elements at the top are rendered behind anything else. Which to me seems a little bit counterintuitive, but that's the way they decided to do it. So a uh, shadow is the furthest back so we'll put that right at the top then our fill then our foreground and just for good measure what I'm going to do I'm going to add in a text element into the center of this which is also going to show us our amount as a numeric value so that would look like that 100 out of 100 so let's get setting this up we go over to our fill layer all we need to do is under our image component select image type and change that to filled and by default it'll give you a few extra options and the default option that it gives you is actually the one that we want which is a fill method of radial 360 and if we mess about with this fill amount you can see that we already have the effect that we're looking for but we want to be able to do this through code so now that we've got our actual object set up Let's create a new C sharp script, call that radial bar, and we'll open it up in Visual Studio. And just why this loads up, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on his website, go follow him on Twitter, and get up to date with his latest game in production. I'm sure you're all going to love it. And I just want to thank everyone supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. Okay, so we've got our script open in Visual Studio. We don't need an update method, but we will need our start method. We won't be needing our system namespaces, but we will be needing using unityengine.ui. 
and we're also going to be using Text Mesh Pro. So what do we need inside here? Well, first of all, we need a reference to our fill image. So that's going to be a public image fill. And we're also going to need reference to our text element for our amount. So that's going to be public text mesh pro UGUI. And we'll call that amount. And the final two things we're going to need, we're going to need two integer values, one for the current value and one for the maximum value. So those will be public int current value and max value. So by default, we want this to start at zero. So the first thing we want to do is initialize our fill amount. So we can set a fill dot fill amount equal to, and now we want to normalize our current value and our max value into a value between zero and one. And the reason we need to do that is because when we use this filled amount, the actual fill amount value has a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. Now we can't change that, or at least I don't know how to change that. If you know how to do it, let me know in the comments, please. But for now, what we're going to do, we're going to create a method just for calculating that for us. It's a really simple method. So that's going to be a private, it's going to return a float, and I'm going to call that normalize. And all this is going to do, this is going to return current value divided by max value. Now, the actual formula for normalizing is your current value minus your minimum value divided by your maximum value minus your minimum value. But because our minimum value is zero, there's no point in doing those extra checks. So we can just divide current by max. And the final thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to cast this to a float because current value and max value are both integers. This will always return zero. And now back up to our start method, we can set our fill amount to the value of normalize. And then we'll go ahead and set our amount text equal to, and we'll set this to a current value slash a max value. So now we can actually get into updating our radial progress bar. So we'll create a public void add, which is going to add a value to our current value. So we'll pass that in as a parameter. We'll call that val. And then we'll just simply set current value plus equal to val. Then we'll do a quick sanity check just at the end because we don't want this going past our maximum value. So we can check if current value is now greater than our max value, we'll just set current value equal to max value. So now it can never go past 100 if that's what our maximum value is. Next, it is as simple as copying those two lines out of our start and updating our fill amount and our text every time we add to our radial bar value. So now we can pop back over into Unity select our radial bar parent game object and drag that in. Drag our fill into our fill and drag our amount into our amount. And that's pretty much it. We should be good to test this now. But what is actually really good about this method is the fact that I can now drag radial bar out into my assets folder and make a prefab out of it. So now I can drag in as many radial bars as I like into my UI and they'll all control themselves independently because they have their own version of the radial bar script. Beautiful. So let's test this out. I already have a little test script going on here. I'm just going to uncomment this. So as you can see here, what we're going to do, we're going to have a reference to a radial bar and we're going to have two methods that are going to correspond to the buttons already on screen. One to add 10 and one to add one to our radial bar value. Let's make sure that these are all connected. We need to drag in a radial bar into these references. And then we've already got our buttons set up. So the final thing to do is actually set up our values. So say we want our current value to start at zero and our maximum to be 100. If we play this, we should see that this initializes as we expect. And it does. We have zero out of 100 and we have no fill bar. Now, if we start adding, 
we can see a radial bar starts to grow. And if we get to the end point, now I'm only seven away from a max and I click add 10, we just go to 100. And because we've made these public, we can give ourselves, say, a value of 56 at the start and a maximum value of 845. Why not? If we play the game again, we can see we already have a little bit of our progress bar. We have 56 out of 845 and everything works perfectly regardless of the values that we provide. And like I said, if I shrink this down a little bit, drag in another radial bar. This one won't be controlled by a button, but what we can go ahead and do, we can set this one's current value to 1000 out of 5050. Then if we play the game, we should see we have two independent radial bars that we can control on their own. I hope this has actually shown you how you can get this sort of radial bar into your game relatively simply and pain free. So with that, I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more bite-sized Unity hints and tips.